Okay, um, the last sharing yeah, in the statue today is held by Kara, uh, who is the director of the API First. Hello. Hi, Eric. Uh, Can you hear yeah. me okay? Yeah, sure, sure. It's quite clear. Yeah. Uh, the Lovely. topic that you will present as uh, getting API management adopted to hearts and minds beyond the technology, right? That's right, Eric. Thank you. Yeah, it's your time. Friends? Nothing. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you for um, the opportunity to. Uh, share thoughts with you over the next uh, 20 minutes or so. Uh, my name is Claire Barrett. I'm a director at APIs First. I make strategy happen. That's uh, API-enabled strategy for uh, both uh, business and technology uh, directions and uh, leadership. I'm a researcher and educator in the space, and uh, I specialize in uh, large-scale complex uh, um, uh, change uh, across business and tech in traditionally mature uh, organizations. I'm also the global um, uh, uh, women in APIs community leader and privileged to be part of um, the API collective.com um, as well. And uh, you can find out more about us there. Today, I'm going to talk about the, um, some of the considerations for managing the people aspects behind API management systems. Uh, so this is uh, not about the features and functions of uh, uh, technologies that support API, capability, API management capabilities in organizations, but what are some of the things that need to be addressed in order for uh, investments in API management platforms to uh, realize the benefits and the potential um, that they have and uh, who are some of the people and what are some of the things that they are looking to achieve and how can uh, you help uh, navigate that. So that's about uh, both justifying API management system investments but also getting value uh, from those, those uh, um, projects and investments. Many years ago, um, uh, well, certainly long before the pandemic, so it seemed even longer ago, um, I uh, had a, a first experience on a holiday of seeing a coral reef in, uh, um, in, 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 in real life. Um, I went on a, a snorkeling trip off the uh, south, uh, coast of um, southwest of uh, the United States. And I always remember just um, the first experience of putting um, uh, a mask on and a snorkel and um, uh, put, looking below the water and seeing beneath me this extraordinary um, uh, vision of all of this activity of fish and corals and color and activity. And in, for some people, um, uh, that may be how they look at API potential and the potential for um, support in an organization. It seems that APIs can solve problems um, and opportunities for um, customer facing businesses, for um, speeding up tech, for uh, engineering simplicity, all sorts of types of code. And actually for many different people in the organization, not just uh, technologists, but increasingly um, business uh, partners and sponsors can use APIs and get benefit from having an API management system. The challenge is an awful lot of people have perhaps still got their, their head above the water and they're just uh, not seeing all of that uh, um, color and, uh, um, and potential. And this is kind of part of what is getting, uh, needs to um, help people understand and get behind the potential, thinking about that. Um, so why is, why is this important? Well, really a lot of, a lot of organizations are investing considerable sums of money and time and cost and effort in, uh, in finding, choosing, evaluating, and then implementing and deploying uh, API management capabilities to help um, APIs be found, be, uh, um, be produced, consumed, um, and used both not just internally in their organization, but increasingly beyond that as they start to do things like look at 
um, API uh, products to generate uh, uh, revenue or new um, uh, customer and distribution potential. And they're doing this without um, necessarily taking enough of the, the people factors into account. Um, and some of the things I've got there at the bottom are some of the things that I would consider uh, need to be included in uh, uh, thinking more broadly than um, the, uh, the, the, the system itself. And, and what does that mean? Um, one of the things, uh, the sorts of symptoms that people are seeing by not addressing these people factors is uh, people finding, um, called, called it excuses, or finding reasons why, for example, their particular project doesn't have the, um, the, the budget or the time to um, solve the, uh, an in, the integration problem um, uh, with uh, building a new API. They may just look to um, continue doing maybe point to point. Um, uh, people are not uh, necessarily taking up the, the, the use of the platform. Um, so they might be continuing to use kind of off system um, API um, d d development activities and not uh, um, wanting to contribute into the shared application. Um, or perhaps there are other teams beyond the uh, API uh, um, group uh, in the organization who need to be on, on board uh, to commit to building the, the right, uh, could be security process, the right um, engineering disciplines, the right complementary practices that will uh, enable the API management system to, to get the benefits that are expected. And a lot of these people factors that I've uh, described, uh, shown here around um, uh, the communication, the understanding, the training are, uh, uh, are not getting the right connection and attention. And part of that is because of this um, uh, complexity almost in terms of the opportunities that can be offered. It's, it's as if um, an API management opportunity is seen as uh, offering so many things to so many different stakeholders um, all potentially at the same time that uh, uh, not everybody um, gets on board because they're all trying to be pleased with everything, but in the end, perhaps not trying, not really clear about what an API management solution offers to them. So this is about getting the right expectations set up front. Um, I'm going to talk about the expectations, how to define the benefits, understanding who the stakeholders are, and then, then what are some of the measures that are going to be in place to help people um, track and realize continuously what they're going to get in terms of value from their API management investment. A lot of people start out by talking about the size of the um, API management market. Um, here are three uh, examples of um, uh, external research into what the size of that market is. Uh, they all um, kind of complement each other and or uh, um, you could argue slightly complete, but at the end of the day, they're telling us that the, uh, the market is big and is getting bigger. Um, that uh, one of the, 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 however, there are a number of questions that one should ask about what they mean by this market um, because these messages are really more um, oriented towards investors in API management solutions or people that are um, the, the vendors and the, um, uh, the suppliers of those in order to understand um, uh, why this is a, an important place to invest. It doesn't necessarily inform the reason why a, um, a customer of one of these solutions should necessarily invest in it. Um, what is more important for those organizations is the kind of objectives that um, API management uh, can deliver on. And these are some of the examples uh, that um, we see um, uh, companies may be looking to contribute um, to through the implementation of an API management platform. Um, they're looking to realize uh, business business objectives, um, things like getting new products to market. There's often a lot about speeding up the pace at which an organization can innovate and do things differently and do new things. 
Um, they may be looking to open up new markets. They may be solving, looking to solve customer pain points, digitize. Many of these objectives um, are often part of an organization's broader digital transformation program. And there is some uh, argument that an API management system can help contribute to them. Um, but I would argue that uh, these are usually quite indirect objectives and they are um, challenging to actually show clearly to uh, um, people who may be sponsors or um, uh, supporters of API management and or um, future users and contributors to its success, um, they may not be able to easily um, equate or be able to um, justify how it could actually, um, having a successful API management system could directly affect these. Um, they'll be asking questions about what are all the other things that need to be uh, done and going on in the background to support this. And even which of these might be the most important? Um, these are the sorts of questions that internal stakeholders would be asking, could be, could, should be asking themselves if the objectives are set in these um, uh, more indirect ways. Um, recommendations that we would make to make your API management objectives more realistic is to focus on things that it can directly impact. And these are some examples of uh, uh, um, API management objectives that can be um, quite much more tightly, uh, clearly understood, communicated and measured in terms of success. So for example, if um, uh, an organization is going is at a level of API maturity where there are lots of um, pockets and bubbles of API um, experience coming to life. There's kind of lots of um, activity proliferating, but it's not yet um, uh, consistent. And an API management system might uh, allow uh, some embedded, uh, clearly visible sets of standards to. Um, uh, show uh, consumers and, and producers of APIs, API producers particularly, internally what will enable them to comply. The, the platform can quite clearly raise those, help with raising levels of compliance. They can provide discoverability, they can help um, uh, with automation and ease and simplicity of onboarding uh, new consumers. They can improve the experience uh, that um, developers uh, will achieve internally and or externally at the organization. So these types of things and the contribution perhaps to the uh, simplification of an IT environment are uh, objectives that are a lot clearer and easier to manage and measure from uh, an APIM uh, implementation and deployment. Um, there are still questions about which of these are the most important because working on all of these may be, um, may be important, but it's going to be challenging um, we, uh, by focusing on all of these things <laughs> at the same time. Um, it can take a very long time to be able to deliver on uh, um, tangible benefits and that can um, be challenging. Therefore, people can kind of uh, um, get tired or not, not see uh, the commitment that they need to stay involved. And uh, 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 also it means that the team can be kind of like chasing all of those fish on the coral reef, um, trying to chase lots of different things at the same time, rather than doubling down on, on one or two things and, and uh, showing success and allowing uh, API management capabilities to evolve. Um, the, uh, uh, in terms, however, of answering the question about, well, how how can I get support for an API management objective if it isn't clear that it delivers on broader business objectives? Um, uh, we'd, I'd, we would suggest that um, it's in, always important to make clear links between the types of direct um, objectives. I've got some of these ones on the right here that uh, uh, might be the, 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 in this case, three top priorities. Um, for uh, an organization's API M 
agenda at that point in time. Those three objectives, so making APIs more discoverable, um, improving the onboarding process, raising the levels of compliance, they can directly uh, um, be measured, they can be tracked and reported on, and they will contribute to making it easier and faster to change, uh, um, uh, make IT changes across the board. That those themselves will, I'm going back to the left, further left um, now, will make it easier to innovate and get new products to market. So if one's starting with the business objectives left to right, um, you can show how um, the uh, API management system can support them. But in terms of the um, tangible measures uh, that you'll be able to show purely come from the system, as opposed to all the other things that need to go on around um, making business success, you want to focus on the right-hand side. Um, I call this uh, dancing the benefits two-step because you've really got to be thinking of APIs and API management as uh, enabling um, uh, things that then support business outcomes as opposed to uh, um, trying to, to achieve all things for all people. Another key, uh, key element for adoption that um, uh, can get, I guess, either underestimated or perhaps even really overlooked when um, uh, planning out and executing successful API uh, management tooling and capabilities, and that's about understanding who the stakeholders are. And uh, I tend to look at it from, um, I'm, going to, I'm going to, rather than um, talk about a specific case study, I'm going to uh, introduce a fictional uh, company. Um, they're a mature business that, uh, um, I imagine a mature business that does uh, uh, primarily business to business type of um, uh, uh, interactions and services. Um, and th these effectively are a, a kind of a hybrid set of uh, stakeholders um, that are that are, are similar to ones that um, that we see in the, uh, and and um, uh, meet and know in, in the organisations that we're helping, um, and uh, I'm choosing a design using a design thinking approach, which normally one think of customers, but I'm actually use, applying this to uh, our um, stakeholders of an API uh, program or an API management system in particular, and so the first persona in this fictional company is uh, our enterprise architect. It's uh, uh, meet Carl. Um, uh, Carl's uh, um, the API uh, go-to person for this organization. So um, he's very much championing and evangelizing for APIs and API management in particular uh, at this, this organization. In fact, he's um, uh, of a view that it, as soon as uh, really everything is kind of waiting on getting that uh, that API management platform uh, in place that'll enable an awful lot of the uh, standards and processes um, that uh, and guidelines that they're expecting people to be able to adopt. adopt. Um, that having those in place will stop a lot of the um, proliferation of uh, less compliant um, and uh, APIs that are making he and his teams a bit bit nervous. Um, but he's uh, he's very much recognised as the as the person who's uh, um, if you like, got his head below the water in my, in my earlier methodology. He understands the potential. Um, then meet Sanjay, who's our um, uh, a delivery, uh, season delivery expert. Um, Sanjay's the, the safe pair of hands with, you know, 20 plus years experience of uh, complex programs and projects um, and uh, but very much a leader in the, in the tra digital transformation agenda for this organisation. All about um, process digitization, um, uh, getting things done faster, more quickly, more efficiently at lower cost. Um, from an API perspective, recognizes that um, there's potential, but doesn't see that um, uh, his colleagues and uh, the other supporting systems and so on around the business are ready yet. Um, and so he's much more um, uh, committed to AI-driven uh, um, change and support um, and cybersecurity and cloud. Um, so uh, we'll get around to APIs at some stage, um, if you like, but um, not, not the biggest priority. 
Um, Jennifer's another uh, um, key, is our other key persona in this uh, fictional organization. And she's very much the commercial uh, customer sales oriented person. Um, she's getting uh, uh, a growing um, level of interest, even um, if you like some, some kind of pressure um, from her customers with uh, seeking for her business to be more of her business to be done with them uh, via API. So she, she recognizes this is a, um, uh, a very much um, a growing um, and increasingly important part of her business. Um, but uh, she sees that her um, her IT colleagues are the, are the the trusted people to make that happen. Um, she hasn't yet. Uh, she doesn't um, necessarily see that it's a priority for her and her team to be able to understand more about um, uh, or uh, let alone um, as a kind of user of, for example, API management capabilities. She's kind of curious as to what others are doing, um, uh, and I would. Um, uh, we typically find that a lot of large, larger organizations, in particular mature organizations, are finding these types of personas fall into three different groups or types of stakeholders. Um, I refer to them as kind of the elders of the organization, the sponsors of whom Jennifer would be part of um, uh, that community, people who are transforming um, or leading uh, and exploring new ways of working, new uh, customer experiences, new um, reimagining, uh, uh, new types of um, uh, in, uh, ways of uh, dealing with business as transformers, and the technologists with the roadmaps, the the ways of navigating the change, um, who would be uh, also um, clearly implementing and leading probably a lot of the API management capability, and these. Three personas, Jennifer, Sanjay, and, and Carl, um, would uh, typically represent um, uh, uh, people in these uh, roles, all three of whom have API potential, but as you can see from where they're starting from, very different types of needs, and they are going to have different types of objectives. Um, just introduce another, uh, another persona, Dylan, uh, who's um, an external uh, citizen developer, if you like, um, that can uh, that has got an interest in increasingly in APIs that uh, um, could be available to uh, contribute to getting his startup up and running um, uh, earlier and, and quicker and faster. Um, of course, APIs um, are a, a no-brainer uh, in his um, experience. Um, he's driven by making a difference and uh, all about discoverability. He sits outside of this stakeholder community, and I call them a community. It's not an org structure. It's not an operating model. It's just a representation for um, API needs that uh, um, uh, demonstrate kind of where collaboration needs to happen in an organization to get behind the objectives and the human um, requirements. So. Um, if we were to go back to the objectives that we talked about earlier, that sample set of priorities for our fictional business around ultimately making it easier, perhaps to get new products to market, making IT change, which would not just be for new products, but also for um, uh, legacy types of systems and a number of API uh, management objectives, you can kind of map your stakeholders to um, thinking about what each of them gets out of uh, um, the API management objectives directly, but also some of the broader contributions to business strategy. So just going to quickly talk about keeping those people engaged. I can see Eric um, joining, um, joining back. This is about getting the right measures in place for um, uh, tracking and realizing those benefits. Uh, we see this as very much an evolutionary process and uh, uh, depending on where an organization's API maturity is at, the types of measures that would be coming out of the API management system and uh, its implementation to get people engaged and involved will evolve over time as well. It may start out as simply as number of API calls, it may over time become a lot more towards the uh, um, 
uh, the broader uh, goals of, of API reuse, of revenue enabled, but these measures will, ex will um, evolve with each iteration of change. And uh, they may also be um, uh, tracked in relation to some of the bigger, broader business measures. However, that will be um, not typically directly related to the API management capability because there'll be a lot of other initiatives generally going on that will help realize the organization's broader change. Um, uh, in terms of a uh, question we often get asked is how often should, uh, uh, how long should you wait before you're um, uh, delivering results and showing progress with your API uh, initiative as a whole? And uh, that often is informing your, um, your API management case. We'd say you have to be able to show results within less than uh, three months or less. That's how much, um, uh, how long people's attention span is. And so uh, finding the right objectives for the right stakeholders with the right measures is really key. So um, uh, in terms of increasing adoption around an API management system project, uh, make sure that you focus, so the key takeouts, make sure you focus on uh, the, and understand and can measure the direct impacts. Uh, know and appreciate what some of the indirect impacts are, but recognize that you, um, uh, that there are other places where that other contributions that will be um, making those uh, real. Um, but make sure that is really consistently understood and communicated and expect that the measures that you're using to track your progress, uh, to keep people, get people on board and keep them involved, uh, will also evolve over time. So thank you for um, uh, uh, the time this afternoon. Uh, if you want to find out more about how we help people um, and uh, uh, the, the kinds of um, consulting studies that we're involved in, um, you can contact me on directly on LinkedIn. Uh, uh, we're also at uh, um, the APIs at apisfirst.com or the apicollective.com. Thanks, Carol. Yeah, I think that the time is almost up. And if the all oh, attendees have some questions about these topics, you can stay uh, ask in the stay chat. Yeah, thanks, Carol. Thank you very much. Okay.